Well, hello. So for this year, I've got some very exciting news. We have moved to France. So my husband and I have bought this amazing place in the Pyrenees Mountains in the south of France. And um, yeah, it's really exciting. Obviously a big life change. We've been wanting to uh, move to the mountains for years and we've always loved France. We've come here for uh, pretty much every year um, since we got together. And um, finally, <laughs> last year we took the plunge. So we bought this house last year and we've taken um, a few months to finally get everyone moved in. So I'm going to take you around the back and we're going to go see the horses and uh, meet some, some new arrivals as well. Okay, so we brought I had eight horses back in Yorkshire and we've brought four of them with me. Um, so the herd was kind of divided into the young ones and the old ones. So the old ones were Toby, who's been with me for since I was 10, so a very long time. Um, Rasheen, who is Rachel's horse, um, Khalil, our Arab, and Copper, the little Shetland. And they are all in their 30s, obviously too old to move. Luckily, they're able to stay at the farm. So I've taken the four young ones with me. Um, and so we've got Freckles, Rowan, India, and Heather. And as you can see, they're enjoying the, the sunshine and the grass. So to get them here, well, firstly, uh, they came this this year. So, well, between Brexit and COVID, it's not been the best time to be moving to a different country. I don't recommend moving house to a new country through a newly created border that is closed due to a, a global pandemic. So the past few months have been pretty stressful, a lot of paperwork, um, and it was really tricky to get the horses through so so soon as well but we are all here and um, in the end I had to use a transporter I would much preferred to travel them myself which was my original plan um, but I ended up having to use a transporter because of the border and um, they've actually been fine they um, have had lots and lots of loading training beforehand so they were fine with the loading the traveling um, I had they were delivered to the Jeet where we were staying before and we had to transport them here which is about an hour up into the mountains from there um, in our own in my own horse box and they all loaded fine traveled really well and um, so the, all the loading piece was great but they um, have definitely got a little bit more well a lot more anxiety about being handled by strange men specifically and um, which I've noticed I had to get a vet out to India because she was really sore when she arrived and um, her muscles didn't hey Ro you say hi oh I feel honored since there's so much grass let me give you a scratch there we go um the India's uh yeah muscles didn't cope too well with all of the traveling oh hang on <laughs> we've got horses everywhere <laughs> So I was saying that India's um, muscles didn't cope too well with the um, transport. She was really, really stiff when she arrived and I had to get a vet out the next day to um, give her some um, uh, you know, pain relief and anti-inflammatories and things. And um, they all were really, really anxious about the vet, which they've never been before. Now the guys doing the transporting, they weren't the most sensitive or uh, aware horse people. It was kind of all very business-like. They were in a rush, they were very heavy-handed, especially compared to what these guys are used to. So I think that was a bit of a shock, but they've all coped really, really well um, emotionally. And as I say, it hasn't affected their willingness to load and, and calmness when they're traveling, which is really, really great. So we're all here now. <laughs> um, and the, most of the land is goes up the hill into the woods. We've got a field back there that they've been in. Um, we've just let them in here for uh, some grass and we've got some more land just across the road in front of the house as well, which is flatter. So that's where I'm hoping I can get some a barn and possibly an arena in there as well. So that's definitely the place to work because all the land up here is really, really steep. I don't know if you can see here because from the on camera it never looks that great but over there you can see the mountain peaks and um, got lovely snow covered peaks oh here we go <laughs> Okay, so I was going to get to them in a minute, but let's, uh, since Coconut's introduced himself, let's go see them. 
Okay, so um, when we bought the house, the people who had it before us, they had these three donkeys out the back and uh, they asked if we wanted them free with the house because they helped keep the woods clear and things. So of course I said yes. Uh, who wouldn't want them? Um, so we've got a uh, noisette, which is hazelnut on the end, cerise in the middle, which is cherry. Um, and then this guy was, he was called Colin, which is Colin, um, but we've renamed him coconut to go with the theme. Um, so we've got noisette, cerise, a coconut, um, which is not French, but uh, uh, it works. <laughs> so they are really lovely. They um, shout whenever we appear at the moment. So that is something that I would like to, uh, I'm going to work on reducing so that we can be here without them shouting all the time. They are pretty friendly when you, um, if you're pretty slow, they're kind of used to getting hand treats and things, but they're not been that handled that often. So, oh, Cerise, that's good. She's the best. She's the youngest one. The other two are older. They do often flinch a lot if you bring anything new to them. Um, and these two have had their feet trimmed a little bit, but uh, Coconut has never had his feet trimmed because he kicks. And one of his front foot's really quite a club foot and the other one's really slippered under. So um, I'm looking forward to having both a training and a trimming project there, which of course I'll, I'll keep you up to date with. Um, but they're really great and really, really cute. And the, the donkeys and the horses have gotten really well. In fact, when we first turned the horses out, um, so I don't think Cerise has ever seen horses before because she got very worried and uh, they kept hightailing it off into the woods because you were a bit concerned, weren't you? Hey? Eh? A bit concerned about those horses, which is funny because I thought it would be the other way around that the donkeys, would, that the horses would be worried about the donkeys, but no. Oh. Oh, it's good. You want to come over? You want to show off your terrible feet? So there, you can see he's just a little bit worried sometimes. You want to? So he's probably the most worried of all, which is not surprising if he's the one who's kicking. No? Obviously, I don't want to frighten them, but obviously any quick movements, if you're holding any strange objects, they do tend to, to scatter quite quickly. Um, so a little bit of, of de-spooking work and confidence building with them, but haven't really started yet. We've literally just been getting, um, oh, hey, food over the fence. Obviously, all this barbed wire and stuff we're going to get uh, rid of, but they've been living with it for a very long time and uh, know exactly how to handle it. But we've put electric fencing up for all the horses um, and including a lot of temporary fencing. So it's all going to look a lot smarter uh, at some point. Oh, hey, can I say hi? Can we have a little scratch? Oh, there we go. There we go. So here we are. This is my little piece of paradise. It's absolutely amazing. Um, we can't wait to work on this. This is, uh, we want to make a bit more of a, a wildlife friendly pond that we can swim in um, obviously a bit more fencing for the needed for the horses um, and incredible views very very quiet little valley road over to the snow-capped mountains which we've already started exploring but we've had two days <laughs> where we've been able to get away for a few hours been so much to do but yeah really looking forward to um, getting climbing and camping and wild swimming and um, also getting out with the horses and exploring the amazing area too we've met some uh, wonderful people and um, very sadly we did bring our dog with us as well Lily um, and a few weeks after we got here and um, she was very old she's nearly 13 but um, she got sick and um, she passed away but through that process we did get to meet the local vet and she's absolutely brilliant she's just um, 10 minutes up the road so that was nice. We've met some other lovely people who have all been really helpful. And, um, but that was, yeah, kind of sideswiped us a little bit for, the, for a few days. Um, was was very sad to have Lily die just as we got here. Um, but we had a super road trip with her and some adventures on the way down. So that was really nice. And I'm really, really pleased that the horses are here and sound and healthy. And we're here in this amazing place and environment. So hopefully um, we'll be able to bring in lots of um, very exciting, beautiful, mountain-filled, horse-filled videos for you. And of course, I'll keep you updated on the donkey progress as well. So obviously there wasn't much training in this video, but if you want to find out more about my approach, um, then I do have an online um, club where you can find hundreds of step-by-step -step 
video tutorials in my home study courses and there's loads of material on there already about how to get started using positive reinforcement training, using it for de-spooking, for riding, loading, all that kind of thing. So you can see the techniques that I use to, for example, train my horses to be really confident loading and traveling and um, I'll put full videos up of the donkeys on there as well as I work to um, get them more confident, handle their feet and things. Again, there are already videos up there showing horses and donkeys and um, building confidence and um, learning about hoof handling and generally overcoming fear and things. Um, so there's lots of material there and I'll be adding more uh, all the time. There's also a really great community and you can join in our Q&As um, where you get to chat to Rachel and myself live, ask your questions, all the recordings are available. And we also have... Um, regular study groups, which are run by either Rachel and I or our coaches, where you can get more support and guidance there too. That's all part of the membership. If you want to find out more, then just head over to connectiontraining.com. You can find out more about us, our approach and join the CT club there too. You can also head over to Amazon, just search for connection training and you'll find our best-selling book there. And that has a lot more about our approach and techniques too. Thanks a lot and see you soon.